So I'm sitting here right now looking at some data from my assessment yesterday, and there's some really valuable insights that I have been kind of picking up right now. So I'm comparing my two counter movement jumps. So on the first jump, I hit 54 centimeters, okay? The second jump was 51 centimeters. Now, I sat down and I tried to find a reason what made these two jumps result in different jump heights. And I think I have gotten it. So if we look, the very first thing that pops out is look at this. My counter movement depth was just 36 centimeters here. Here, I went down 52 centimeters. That's a big difference. Now, what does that mean? That means I used more range of motion on the second jump. And for some reason, I couldn't convert that. Because if we also look at how long it took to complete those breaking and propulsive phases, it was the exact same. So my breaking phase was 14.14. It was the same here on the worst jump. The same with the propulsive phase, 0.27. And here also 0.27. So what was the difference then? If it took me the same time to complete those phases, the braking and the propulsive phase, why did I jump lower? Then I kept on looking and what really jumped out to me is first, obviously, because I jumped higher, my takeoff velocity, which determines jump height, is higher on the better jump. So 326 versus 316. That explains the three centimeters that I was able to jump higher on, on the better jump. So my goal was to find out what made those two jumps different. And I know this isn't conclusive to anything serious, but just for me to learn about how my jumps become successful or more successful and what strategies I adopt or what happens if I'm less successful. So then I came to this. So obviously the propulsive force, the average propulsive force over the whole range of motion, this, this green section here, it is equal. So I have eight, 830 here, 850 on the right leg on the better jump. And it's 830 and 860 on the worst jump. So the propulsive phase, the green phase is the same. So on the concentric, when I push, it was the same on both legs. And that's where I found what made the jumps different, which is the average braking RFD, so how quickly am I applying force in this red phase of the movement, in the braking phase, when trying to decelerate my center of mass, the average force that I apply over this was pretty balanced here. So I have 4.5 thousand newtons per second on the left leg and 4.4 on the right leg, okay? This isn't something spectacular, but if I go onto the worst jump, there's a huge discrepancy. So you can see my right leg was doing way more work in the braking phase of the worst jump, so in the red phase, than the left leg was. So it was 3.7K on the worst jump and 4.5 on the better jump for the left leg. And this explains why I wasn't able to convert more range of motion on the downward phase of the movement into a higher jump, even though my path of acceleration would be greater. So, so this points me to a deficit in the capacity of my left surgical leg to be able to apply high braking forces in deeper ranges of motion for more continuous efforts. So I just plain need to work on the deep range of motion, power capacity of my left knee. That's my main takeaway from this. And other than that, I'm pretty balanced when it comes to the propulsive forces. If it's a really good jump, even the braking phase is balanced. But my left leg just fatigues more quickly, especially in the deeper ranges when it comes to power development. And that points me, like I said, to what I need to work on deep range power movement or oscillatory type movements, 
quick reversals in deep range, which I haven't been working on as much in the past year. So that's four splits for you.